So again, this is an antimony case, which is Erlenmeyer flask deformity, and its differential diagnosis. So Erlenmeyer flask deformity is simply a metaphysial flaring or metaphysial widening. Let us see how we can approach it in viva exam. So first, we can narrow the differential diagnosis of metaphysial flaring by bone density, then by other characteristic features of each. So if there is increased bone density or bone sclerosis, the differential diagnosis would be either osteopetrosis or pyosthenia. If there is decreased bone density or osteopenia, this could be Gaucher disease, thalassemia, or fibrous dysplasia. First, let us talk about osteopetrosis, in which there is generalized increased bone density, and also we can notice that there is an alternative dense and lucent metaphysial lines. You can ask for spine x-ray, looking for well-defined sclerosed end plates, which giving sandwich vertebrae. In pile disease, which called metaphysial dysplasia, typically appear as flared lucent metaphysis with sclerosed diaphysis. And if it's associated with cranial palsy, so we call it craniometaphysial dysplasia. Next category, if there is osteopenia. It could be Gaucher, thalassemia, or fibrous dysplasia. In case of Gaucher disease, besides osteopenia, as we can see how the cortex is paper thin, and metaphysial flaring, look for any uh, vascular necrosis, which can be epiphyseal or medullary. And as we can see in this case, there is diffuse diaphyseal sclerosis, which may indicate medullary uh, vascular necrosis. This is another case of Gaucher disease. In AP view, there was metaphyseal flaring, and we can see here there is subtle area of medullary sclerosis. And this is the same patient MRI, T1 fat sats after contrast, showed serpentine enhancement of infarct MRI, which characteristic of medullary necrosis. Also, MRI can help us to identify the extent of the marrow infiltration. Look for any previous abdominal radiograph for hepatosplenomegaly. Next is thalassemia. Again, there is osteopenia, very thin cortex, expanded bone, and also there is characteristic coarse trabeculation, giving cobweb appearance. Ask for chest radiograph, looking for rib coarsening and expansion, cardiomegaly, paraspinal lesions, splenomegaly, also, if there is any available skull x-ray, looking for hair on end and widening of diploic space. Next is fibrous dysplasia, which either monoostotic or polyostotic, like this case, which is more aggressive and usually affects one side of the body. As we can see here, there is diffuse lytic lesions with classic ground glass matrix that extend along the length of the affected bone. The bone is expanded, no soft tissue masses, and there is no pre reaction. Lastly, don't forget achondroplasia and multiple hereditary exostoses are also causing metaphysial flaring and Erlenmeyer flask deformity. So diaphysial achalasia, which is autosomal dominant disease, is easily diagnosed by the presence of multiple sessile exostoses. While in achondroplasia, obviously the patient will have typically rhizomelic shortening and metaphysial flaring. Don't forget to look for other features of achondroplasia. We can see the rhizomelia, shortening of the femur, widening metaphyses. Also, there is long fibula. As we can see, it's extend above tibial plateau. There is V-shaped growth plate. In the pelvis, we can see also horizontal estabular roof, small squared iliac bone, and narrow sciatic notch. So those are the differential diagnoses. Just to recap, first of all, look for bone density, if it's increased or decreased. Look for avascular necrosis that may cause Gaucher disease. If there is short bones, then it may be a chondroplasia. Look for other available radiographs. You, we can see an abdominal 
X-ray hepatosplenomegaly in cause of kosher or thalassemia. Nephrocalcinosis can caused by fibrous dysplasia. And also, don't forget to look for pathological fractures in those cases. And thank you for watching.